does God sorry, does God influence your lawmaking? Yes. How? Absolutely. Um, my first uh, responsibility in life is to give glory to God as a Christian. And I certainly fall short of that. And that's, you know, why I have uh, faith in Jesus and, and the work he did to, to redeem me, to redeem mankind. Um, we don't live in a theocracy. Uh, we don't open the Bible every time we read a bill and say, you know, where's the answer? But it hopefully saturates my thought process. And I have a uh, hope to have a Christian worldview meaning that when I make decisions that um, I, I do ask God for wisdom and hope that um, you know, the creator of the universe has something to say about how civil government should run. And I do believe that civil government was an institution created by God. Are there any issues, and I know we were talking about abortion before, but um, abortion and, and how does... I guess any issues that you turn to your faith for the answer in, in dealing with here in the Capitol? One of the verses I love is Micah 6, 8, and it says, you know, what does the Lord ask of you? And it's to um, act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly before your God. Uh, one example of that for me was, you know, last session when I served on the Criminal Jurisprudence Committee. You know, it's, uh, you almost are in the position of a judge when uh, someone brings a bill before you uh, to increase uh, a, a punishment for a severe crime, um, and you realize that there's two sides to the story. There's, you know, the victim, uh, and then there's also the person um, who, you know, may need mercy, and the victim needs justice. And so there's a tension there. And, you know, Micah 6, 8 says to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly before your God. And so, you know, especially in the area of criminal justice, I think there's a real tension between justice and mercy. And I think the more that we can perhaps push that decision-making down to a judge and a jury, the better off we are. But we still have to make decisions down here without knowing exactly how it's going to be implemented when, when it's in a courtroom. How does that apply to then when we're talking about the death penalty? Well, I think I look and say, God created man in his image. And when you look at sort of the origin of capital punishment in the Old Testament, one of the justifications was you have killed someone that was made in God's image. And so as a, every human being is an image bearer of God, of the creator of the universe, and he values that life immensely. And so for me, that's one reason I believe capital punishment is justified uh, when appropriate, is because you have destroyed something that is so valuable, and that is a, the life of a human being created in the image of God. And for me, that uh, gives me comfort in knowing that this is something that the hand of civil government can do when it's time to mete out justice in that manner. What do you say to somebody who reaches a different conclusion based on their definition of God? You know, I, I think that we should always try to, to live at peace with those that disagree with us. And uh, it's not for me to um, forcefully change their mind. It's for me to speak the truth as I know it and uh, pray that they, you know, uh, come to the truth. I, I respect that. You know, I, I've, I've been around the world. I've, I've served in Afghanistan. Uh, in the Navy, I, I have been a lot of places, and I've been around people that share different faiths, different cultures, and um, I, I enjoy working with people who have a diverse viewpoint. Um, so it's not a problem. It's just it's just the world we live in. When it comes to uh, same-sex marriage, does your faith factor in there, or are we just looking at the Constitution and how it's defined, how marriage is defined? I believe marriage is instituted by God uh, as the best way for us to raise families, for the human race to be perpetuated by having children. But I think you can look to a couple of other things that are just common sense. One is just look at human history. Marriage uh, has been defined by every society up until very, very recently as between a man and a woman. And 
so we can just look at human history as, as a, a place to start. Uh, secondly, I think this is about the sovereignty of the states. And so there's a constitutional question uh, that the judiciary should not be telling the 50 states how you should uh, work in the area of marriage. So I think there's a constitutional answer there. There's a common sense history of mankind answer. And I think there's certainly, for me, a biblical answer. When it comes to guns, we've heard the mention of God a lot on the floor and in committees, you know, God-given right and whatnot. What do you see on that front as far as the Second Amendment and the right to bear arms related to your faith? I think that, uh, you know, the Bible calls for us to take care of our families. I think that means defending your family. I think uh, there is, uh, in, you know, going back uh, to, to the Old Testament, there's even some uh, talk about, you know, defending your home. And so I think that uh, the right to defend your family, which is, is a, an appropriate thing, you know, God says, you know, if you don't take care of your family, uh, you're, you're worse than an unbeliever. You're, you're, you know, it's not good at all. So I think the Second Amendment is just an expression of our God-given duty to, to take care of our, of our families. When you were talking about abortion before, you didn't go straight to religion necessarily. You were just talking about it very factually as far as, you know, they don't have a voice, they don't have representation. Mm -hmm. But how much does your faith factor in when we're talking about pro-life issues? You mentioned last session with that bill. The Bible says very clearly that God's relationship to us begins in the womb. Okay, so I believe that there is life at conception. But even if you set that notion aside... There are very clear scriptures that say that I knew you in the womb. That means God had a relationship with you when you're in the womb. And that means God values you because he's in relationship with you. And so I think there's very clear scriptural standing uh, to say that we should be um, protecting innocent children inside the womb. They're, they're created in God's image. And so that for me is uh, fundamental. The arguments oftentimes from uh, perhaps people who think differently is that, you know, if there's more restrictions on abortion and women are having these babies, why not help them take care of them once they're here? What is your view on entitlements and how it relates to uh, taking care of children? Absolutely. We have a role to uh, help people in our society that can't help themselves. Look, but look at our entitlement system. Look at how much Medicaid takes up of our budget. We spend an enormous amount of money helping people. Uh, we spend an enormous amount of money um, on women's health issues. Um, in, in my community, uh, you know, we have Bethesda Health Clinic, which uh, if you're working at least 20 hours a week, uh, you can get health insurance. You can, you can get health care. Um, we support uh, pregnancy resource centers with our private um, uh, money uh, in, in my community. So absolutely, we should be doing that. And, and I think that we have programs in place in the government that do that. Um, but, but really, if you, don't, if you don't have life, you don't have the pursuit of happiness. You know, when, when you read the Declaration of Independence, which is an expression of the intent and the motivation of a constitution, it begins with life. So all these wonderful blessings um, that we get under the Constitution mean nothing if you don't have life. And you talk about um, women's rights, war on women. Well, how many of these babies are going to be women someday? You know, do they, do they not deserve the opportunity to live? I mean, they're just, they're just a few centimeters away from living in the most wonderful land on earth. And maybe they are in tough circumstances, but a tough circumstance in the state of Texas is a far better circumstance than many, many places in the world. And I believe that that baby, even born into a difficult, tough circumstance, has more of an opportunity and more of a chance than any place on earth. Why shouldn't we protect that opportunity for that person? Again, you know, you hear somebody watching the live stream, let's say, of the legislature, and they hear a lot of mention of God and, and different uh, religions. Religion is a very personal thing. What would you say to somebody who, you know, maybe 
thinks it blurs the line of church and state? I think that our founders never intended for one denomination or one strain of Christianity to um, say this is the way every American should live. But I think our founders totally intended and had a constitutional framework that allowed their Christian faith to permeate government. So it's, it's freedom uh, of religion, not freedom from religion. And I expect every member of the legislature to take their, their personal views and live by them. I have no problem with that. And I think that when Christians uh, are living as they should, then that allows more freedom. It allows uh, help for people who need help. It, it makes for a great society. It really does. And so, you know, we have a, we have in God we trust on our money. I mean, just look at our nation's history. And, you know, John Adams said that our whole constitution and our whole form of government depends on a moral people. And I think that the morals uh, found in the Bible uh, and as, as taught by Christ uh, are the best in the world. And I think when we have that and we have legislators that believe that, we're going to have a great form of government that, that honors people's beliefs. I mean, look, look at Christianity and how we honor the freedom of everyone to practice their religion, to open up a mosque on the corner if you want to. Our form of government has given more freedom for people to practice their different religious uh, beliefs than any other form of government on the, on the face of earth. Representative, anything else to add that I didn't hit on, or guys, any other topic? Um, well, we appreciate you sitting down with Thank us. Thank you. I enjoyed wow. it.